obviously talk about this this is courtesy of hype beast it says yes Ducey and babe team up for a collaborative trucker hat and this one brings back a lot of bad memories too so this is courtesy of hype beast um they've come together with babe obviously used to do a collaborative trucker hat pretty self-explanatory you've got the babe camo there on the cap with the Ducey embroidered actually on the front the shape of it looks really cool the colors of the of the camo look amazing i'm always a big fan of the yellow sort of like sand camo I'm, I'm still looking for a snowball jacket in this exact camo color it's one of the best that jacket that they've got there from Stussy is cool as well and the pink and I think it comes in black too if I'm not mistaken let's double check here actually I've got the tweet up here that's got all the colors of the actual hat yeah so it comes in the kind of classic babe camo pink camo uh, purple camo and black camo the black's probably the weakest color these are probably the best all these three here and obviously they've come out they're already sold out so don't even bother trying as you can see here sold out $99 sorry £99 pretty decent I like the fact that on the inside the label is upside down kind of a little head nod to the old school um babe stuff back in the day where the up uh, the logo on the back was either the back of the head and sometimes the logo inside the hats was always upside down so when you flicked it it was the right side up so that's a cool little motif they're done there and yeah it looks really good in terms of shape wise it looks nice the only thing i don't like about it is that it's a, the, the brim's already bent you know i want to flatten the brim i don't like my 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 uh the brims on my cap's bent but the reason why this brings up bad memories i was going to say was that back in the day when i used to go to um the busy work the busy workshop here in london in upper james street it was like the only babe store here in london like a one of the best kind of babe stores anyway in terms of merchandising and in terms of how it was kind of interior designed and whatnot of course back in the day when nigo was running babe it was just an incredible brand to sort of experience in real time but i kind of caught onto it late i wouldn't say late but like late-ish i guess it was like 18 19 around that time probably i'm um, starting to get into babe and everyone that was queuing ahead of us was like oh much older i think they were maybe like three four years older than us maybe in their early 20s and they obviously had jobs and disposable income so they were able to go in there or maybe they just had f parents with money they're able to go in there and drop loads of cash on stuff on a continual basis because that was a problem with babe back then they used to drop often but the they also drop often but obviously the retail price was really high so you could only buy certain things but obviously if you had the funds you could buy everything and these guys would queue up usually ahead of time or they do this thing where they had friends that would basically hold their spots for them or they just come in the morning and just jump the queue because they were like you know friends and family and they would always buy out all the things in there and the thing that was really sucked about it is that you'd be queuing outside the store in the cold in your little sleeping bag they'd, they'd come in jump the queue um, or they'd come or they'd be there already so you'd have to sleep uh, behind them for how many hours knowing full well most likely when they get in they're going to buy an entire shop there's going to be nothing to buy um, and then you just have to take the L and what made it worse too the guys in that crew were fucking cunts there was this one Asian dude in the crew um, who if people kind of know me and know that era you know who I'm talking about this one Asian dude who was an absolute cock like the kind of guy that you went to brick over the head and this is again only buying stuff back in the day stuff seeing stuff when it comes to street where it was so awful it was so flipping tense people were so like you know catty and stuff the the scene now is much better the kids coming up now what they're doing the brands that they have how they kind of um build community the way they talk to their customers the it's much better than it was back then even the options are just much better you can definitely find some instagram brand that it's probably not as maybe as limited and as maybe high quality as all this kind of stuff you get from Stussy or Babe, but still it maybe speaks to you better maybe the guy or girl that you kind of vibe with a lot more it's just stuff that you maybe want to support because you know whatever you want to support it um it's more of your aesthetic whatever there's really cool stuff happening like even regionally there's stuff happening in LA stuff happening in New York stuff happening in middle America I love it but back then it was really tense man really really tense to the point where you thought you were going to fight somebody for a flipping <coughs> you know shark hoodie and I remember this one particular time having to queue up in front of these flipping guys with, you know, deep pockets. They're in there buying all the babe stuff. And I think that was that was actually the first time in my life I saw somebody with like an Amex black card, you know, that titanium one. Well, I saw a titanium one, I saw a black card. That was the first time in my life I saw someone, like a kid, basically, with one. I was like, oh my God. And then, of course, they're dropping all that money. They're buying everything in the store. I remember one time I went to buy the flipping, you know, remember the babe 
and Kors Chomper Varsity jacket. I think it was like black and it had like the Chomper teeth on the front. Really nice. Um, and obviously they bought up every other, every size because usually that baby store would only get it, you know, maybe two or three in each size. And they bought every single one, each one in the fa- each one in the flipping crew. And I remember after they left, we went in there and the only thing they had from that drop that I could buy was sellotape. <laughs> I remember that time leaving the busy workshop in flipping Upper James Street with fucking sellotape because these cunts bought everything out and don't even get started on the staff that worked in that store. The staff were worse. Like they employed such cunts. It was just so unbearable to deal with. But, you know, in some cases, again, I still think it was a good lesson and a good life experience because it did it did kind of orientate me to kind of decide to just be a consumer and not try and partake in scene stuff i don't care about releases i don't care about being put on the list i don't care about all that shit and i make money if i want to buy the thing i just buy it and i enjoy it um, and i think that's a far better relationship to have because once you get too close to these sort of things especially when you love it really and you meet people who kind of you know maybe treat you a bit maybe not maybe not they're not as welcoming as you want them to be let me sorry it's rudely because rudely is like everyone's interpretation but let's say you what you have in your head a way they're gonna be and then you get there and not that way it can make you it can maybe make you fall out of love with it i knew that happened with me skateboarding right i went you know my first experience is going into slam city skates were flipping awful um those guys were really 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 rude like back in the day especially when i was coming up it was horrible um all these older again they were, it, it's just funny looking back in it because they were all older at the time you didn't know because you know you just thought everyone was either a couple of years older than you or not but they were much older than us at the time they were maybe some of them were in their mid-20s early 30s and we were like teenagers and they were just being cunts um and they made me essentially fall out of skateboarding because everywhere i looked it was just all little clicks and then when the palace crew came up it was just again all that pwcbc stuff it was just i was just like vomiting in my mouth looking at these boys pretending they're like <laughs> cosplaying as like working class kids i just couldn't understand it like i just didn't get it like sovereign rings and gold tooth caps and stuff and reeboks like what are these people doing are they taking a the piss out of people that i've actually grown up with or is this what they actually dress like um yeah and anyway you know, they're going on to become millionaires so you know, what do i know but yeah bad memories and good memories regarding the babe and stussy stuff it's out now if you want it go get out and get it go out and 